Aquava, and welcome to Expat Life Ghana. I'm Ayo, and this is Tony, and we are documenting our move from Texas to Ghana as we go beyond the return. In this video, we're talking about farming and investment opportunities in agriculture. So let's get this video started. So we have the opportunity to go to a farm in Dodoa, which is um, about, how far was it? Like an hour and it was about an hour drive. minutes? Should have been about half hour drive, but. Uh, the traffic <laughs> in the road, the road was so terrible. Get, getting out to the country, you know, the roads are horrible, but you know. Yeah, the person who was taking us was telling us that this road specifically used to be a very well passed road in the area, but that it has deteriorated so much that like hardly anybody uses it. And we could see yeah, why. Yeah. You kind of had, he had fun with it. Yeah. Four wheel drive is always <laughs> great for these roads in Ghana. If you do not already know, Tony got a truck when we got here to Ghana and he has been testing out its um, Struts, off capabilities. Shots, everything. <laughs> Uh, but it came in very handy to go out to the farm. So we were super excited to hook up with Pastor Paul mm -hmm. and head out to the farm to see what he's doing and all of his expansion that he's getting ready to um, implement. Right. It was like the conversation with him. It was great. It was very informative as far as farming in general and uh, how he plans on uh, expanding his farm. Very interesting conversation with him. Totally, and his thoughts on possible investment opportunities, not mm -hmm. only in um, farming specifically, but in agriculture and industry. I was just like, we talked to him before the interview, yeah. and then we talked to him during the interview, and then we talked to him after the interview, and I felt like at each point I was like, ah, yeah. every time we talked yeah. to him. You can see his, his background in, um, engineering really came out on his farm and his plans for how he sets up his land is very very uh, uh great for uh what he has in mind so absolutely i i just you guys you're going to enjoy this interview yes and we are going to come back afterwards and share a couple of extra tips and tricks and ideas for ag and and ghana so make yep. sure that you come back after the interview and um hear our little take on things yeah. All right, so let's get this interview started. All right, y'all. So I'm here with Pastor Paul, who has just given me the most amazing tour of his farm. I'm letting you know right now, the boys are going to be so sad that they did not come today. So I'm going to have to go back and tell them that we're going to bring them back for another trip. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine with me. But Pastor Paul, will you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience? Um, my name is uh, Reverend Paul Yawati. I'm a, an ordained pastor with the Assemblies of God Church. And still, really, I'm also a farmer. I studied as an engineer, mechanical engineer, to start my life. Yes. I work with a Volta Aluminium, Kaiser Aluminium, for over 20 years. Right. And uh, right now, I've, I'm fully, I'm a full-time pastor, and I want to become a commercial farmer. So we have a gentleman here who started his career working for uh, corporate companies yes. in engineering mm -hmm. has followed his passion into ministry yes. and is now driven into farming because yes. you I love do. it. I, I do. <laughs> he does. I do. <laughs> when you talk to this guy about farming, let me tell you right now, you just get enthusiastic. I'm, yeah. I'm even like, I, can I have some chickens and rabbits? Mm -hmm. They sound amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like um, this farm is kind of the goal that you've been building for yourself over the last several years. Yes. Did you always know you wanted to get into farming or, or is this something you just discovered later on? No, whilst I was working in the corporate um, environment, I still have passion to develop um, or get into agriculture. So it is there, um, I try to save money towards it. Yeah. And that is where we are today. Wow, so now you have been doing ministry work, but you're thinking retirement is on the horizon. You want to start doing farming full time, yes. dedicated. Yes, exactly. I just get so excited when I was here because there's so much great stuff to yeah, see. Yeah. Um, so if if you were starting as either an expat coming into the country or as just someone who's in Ghana who wants to start into farming, what kind of advice can you give people who are interested? Um, personally, I see more 
um, economy driven um, and in in Ghana in the animal husbandry. Okay. That is where in Ghana we are lacking. Got you. Much. Uh, because um, the indigents do a little of maize, a little of cassava, you know, the stuff that we eat. Right. Uh, but when we talk about the bulk of animals, protein, we don't we don't have they when you go to outside uh, Ghana, most prairies you see fish farming, right. you see the cattle industry, yes. you see pig industry. I, I mean I don't think if I'm not mistaken in Ghana you may not find uh, total pigs, 4,000 pigs in Ghana, I'm not sure. Okay, and um, I can tell you from first-hand experience, mm -hmm. it is very hard to find good bacon. Mm -hmm. In yes. fact, I don't know if bacon it's is important. not produced. It's no, all imported. It's imported. So, if you are an expat looking for a farming um, investment, yes. uh, maybe pigs, pigs and, and bacon, bacon and ham, ham yes. sausage. sausage, all of those yes. are imported at this time, exactly. right? Exactly. Oh, that would make me so happy if one of y'all would come and produce <laughs> bacon. <laughs> so when you started this farm, yeah. you actually started with just mangoes. Yes, the first thing we planted was a mango. Mm. But and you would not suggest that somebody else plant mangoes? No. Uh, the fruit, <laughs> you the said fruit, no right away. Yes, the fruit industry is very complicated. Why so? There are a lot of um, challenges in there. Post, if the, one of them is the post-harvest uh, challenges that you have. So would we that don't be have like processing, just a, a lot um, of processing companies in Ghana. We okay. have about two processing companies in Ghana that process fruits. Blue, That's it? Yes, Blue Sky and one other, um, I forgot the name. And so when the mangoes all ripe at the same time, there is a rush, you know, for everybody to go into that same uh, uh, company. Uh, most of the times we lost, you know, we lost a lot of fruits. Because there was no consumer for uh -huh. the product. Exactly. And then the, the local market can't take much at a time. Right. They take a little bit because it's perishable. The, the traders will come and take a little bit of it, go and sell, and come back and take a little bit. Uh, By the time they make two, three rounds, your fruits are done, are in, done. on the tree. So if you, during harvest time, mm -hmm. how much can you sell a mango for? Um, right now, um, Blue Sky, I believe, and uh, is the, the highest buyer in the country. And they take um, a kilo for one CD, 50 pesos for a kilo. On the high side, they paid a kilo, one CD. I'm talking about not dollars, I'm talking about CD. A CD. Yes. <laughs> one. <laughs> one CD, 60 pesos on the high side. <laughs> <laughs> well, so how. Your farm has about, I think, how about many 10, acres 10, of mango? 10, acres of mango. So if you were to harvest your mangoes, mm. how many kilos would you be able to sell at harvest time? Um, if you have, if I have a full um, uh, harvest, my farm can produce between 5 to 10 tons of mangoes a season. That doesn't seem, that doesn't seem like a profitable endeavor. <laughs> if you if you if you have a full harvest, yes. yes, and then it's okay. Yes, but you see, you have just walked through the farm. Yes. How much did you see? Not not a lot. <laughs> so that's some of the challenges. You know, it has its own uh, rhythm. Well, because you were saying that the rains had come. Yes. Right when the mango trees were flowering. Yes. And kind of spoiled uh -huh, some of the. Uh -huh. So that those are pre pre harvest challenges mm. uh -huh. so um, if you are not within a certain time frame at certain times the weather you know will not favor you right you need irrigation when very soon you know the heat is starting to come now if this year the rain has traveled almost into December right and in certain times you don't have it so by December you see that your fruits are asking for water mm. and, and if you, you don't have, have irrigation you are gone right uh -huh. so you need to make provision for irrigation you need to make provision um, you must be within a certain time frame very calculated to be able to make a good good harvest now when we talked to you before you had mm. mentioned that during mango season mangoes don't fetch a very high price no but about three months after mango season after even one month after even the, after one, one month, month after the season that the the selling price of a mango goes from about Let's half a CD to five CDs. Exactly. 
Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, how? I'm not talking about the market. And the last season when I harvested, you see, when you were coming the junction over there. Yes. I sold my mangoes one kilo um, for 50, one city 50 to Blue Sky. Yes. After one month, after I've harvested, I bought four mangoes for 20 cities at the junction. Four mangoes for 20 cities? Yes, for my own consumption in the house. So y you bought mangoes, even yes. though you're farming yes. mangoes? Yes, yes, because it's seasonal. And you paid? I, I have to pay because my children like look. Yes, long, they like of mangoes. mangoes. <laughs> wow, okay, so if you wanted to preserve the mm -hmm. mangoes mm -hmm. so that you could sell them after everyone else has gone through harvest, how do you mm -hmm. preserve them? We have a technology now um, that I've been, you know, sourcing around. Mm -hmm. Learned you can find it in the India and US. It's called the black box. Mm. And it's able to preserve the mangoes fresh for about about a year. That's right. that's what the technology yes. But let's say for even three, four months to six months. Oh wow. You can preserve it. So the ideal the ideal you know investment in this industry uh -huh. is when you can preserve can the mangoes, preserve the, the mangoes. fresh mangoes. Do you know what's really interesting is as we've traveled around, mm -hmm. we've had the opportunity to travel into South America where they do a lot of um, harvest, uh, growing and harvesting of bananas. Okay. And they use that similar technology in mm -hmm. order to harvest the bananas and mm -hmm. then make them available throughout the year ah. at markets. Okay. So just like anybody in the States, right? If you go to your market right now, you can buy fresh, bananas. fresh bananas. produce of all kinds, bananas, apples, okay. lettuce, mangoes, yes, any time of year. Okay. Um, strawberries included and it, it must be through this back black box technology mm -hmm. so an investment opportunity that you see for someone is yes. to preserve preserve mangoes. Um, do you also see space for processing as well is that all in the same facility or are those kind of different things I can say yes but already we have one or two industries that are preserving oh, okay. and then our production capacity I cannot tell you exactly how much we produce mm -hmm. and because I know blue sky goes out of Ghana to buy some of the fruit as well. Okay. Yes, they do go as far as South America to bring in some of the fruit when uh. Ghana doesn't have. So, so even though Ghana is such a high producer of mangoes, mm. they still have a large amount of imports of mangoes yes, because of a lack of preservation. Exactly. Hello, and anybody who wants investments <laughs> like that <laughs> just blows my mind. Yeah, the blue sky don't. So now first it was only in Ghana. Now they have expand. They go to other. West African countries wow. to bring in the mangoes. The last time we talked, uh, they said they go also to South America to bring in, wow. you know, some of the, the mangoes, uh, specifically for processing. Hi, I'm Leo. Subscribe right now. Blue sky, seasonally, you may get a lot of them. Mm. Some even get dropped. With post harvest, don't have preservation. So during the season, there is excess, and blue sky within a short window cannot all buy all of them right so some get rotten people some people don't get sell and uh, not able to sell their mangoes right, right. Uh, but then after the season then that is where we need the mangoes the magic is yeah, so if anybody wants to invest anything like that in that industry it is a fresh preservation which is the first first point and I find that amazing because uh, two things that that you've said that the company is present Yes. So obviously, the the industry can exist. That they can't buy up all the mangoes during season, which means mm. there's room in the market. Yes, that's for sure. And that there's such a high demand afterwards that you know that there would be profit exactly. in being able to Exa preserve. Exactly. I exactly. like that. To me, is a business opportunity waiting to happen. For sure. <laughs> and for sure. I, I've been dreaming, dreaming through that direction all along. That's why I've been searching for an opportunity because uh, those things you can bring them in. One by one, if you, you get one container, two containers at a point, right. gradually you build up, you know, right. uh, uh, an industry out of it. Well, so I'm going to put this out there right now. If you are inspired by the preservation of mangoes or any other fruit that are grown here in mm -hmm. Ghana, mm -hmm. I'm going to send them to you. Yeah, for sure. He's got the magic dream and yeah. years <laughs> of engineering experience to support <laughs> getting it done. If what you preserve, you cannot sell, you can put it into juice. Yes. And what you you can also, um, we have mango chips. I learned that it's a good market for also mango chips. Well, that's. Have you ever tasted it before? I don't think I have Ooh. had mango chips. 
yes very I'm gonna delicious. go get some today <laughs> it's very delicious but you know some of these things um so in actual fact if you set up very well mm -hmm. you have nothing to throw away which would be the ideal right that would yes, be ideal and, and even the the mango seedling and the peels and all people process it into animal feed so there's like there's a holistic way to um, use all everything of it everything. if you have the, the infrastructure set up to process. Exactly. I, I really I love that because now what you've also said is that the people who also farm mangoes around you, not necessarily just you, mm -hmm. who have the seedlings and the waste that gets used as feed, would benefit from having a central especially, processing, especially the the the, the market. Because the women who carry the mangoes from here into the market, mm -hmm. sometimes 30%, 40% um, got rotten. Mm. They can sell. What do they do? Just dump it on the, the dish. And it can be processed into it. It can be processed. So, also mango processing for animal feed. Mm. Now we've got two really great businesses, yeah. possibly three here. Mm. Well, so now you have shrunk the size of your mangoes, mm. uh, your mango field, because you're making room for something else. What are you making room for now? Um, I and right now as we sitting down, uh, what I'm doing is farming. Yes. But I want to move into agribusiness. Yes. And that is um, I've realized that the animal industry um, doesn't have season. Mm. You know, has right. animal husbandry has no season. Right. Um, if I keep my pigs, unless otherwise there's a disease, uh, um, you feed the more you feed the pigs the more value oh, yes. you get. Yes. And the price on the pig has no season. The mangoes has mm. a season. At the pig season, the price is is, is low. Right. And at, at the 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 or the dry season or what we call the the lean season, the price goes up a little bit. Right. But since I have been doing piggery, uh, the price has never changed from season to season. It stayed constant. It's, it's, it's so I realized that the animal industry is a better place to invest I if see. I'm really looking for a good income. A steady income. A steady too. income. So now I want to go into uh, fowl, fowls. When I mean fowls, I'm talking about chicken, I'm talking about ducks, I'm right. talking about geese. Mm -hmm. And the fowl, uh, the geese and the, the, uh, the ducks are a green area in our country. It means that we don't have, don't have people uh, doing it on commercial basis. So I'm going to pause for just a second because I want to recap real quick. Okay. I think it's really important what you've said in terms of being able to maintain income. Yeah. If you're choosing to come to farm or you are already farming here, mm -hmm. you do have to really consider the sustainability of your income exactly. over the course of a whole year. Exactly. And what I'm hearing you say is that when you are in the agricultural business, mm -hmm. because Agriculture is seasonal. Yeah. You they, have seasonal. In agriculture, we have both the animal husbandry and we have the cropping. So the cropping, the cropping becomes very is seasonal. seasonal. If you are, you are doing maize, you are doing tomatoes, you are doing right. pepper and mangoes, those are seasonal. It's all coming in season. Yeah, so your they're... income doesn't stay consistent based on what season exactly. it is. Exactly. But you're saying that when you work specifically with animals yeah. and um, the raising and selling of animals, mm -hmm. that that price has stayed consistent exactly. and so your income can stay more consistent. Exactly. I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind if you're considering farming here. Exactly. I, yeah. I love that idea. And we decide that we, we in Ghana there are not too many you know animal husbandry industries. They're so not, you're talking about chicken, chicken geese, geese, ducks, ducks and pigs, then also pigs, pigs. If rabbits. If you want to go to rabbits, you want to go into cattle and all those they, they belong to the animal husbandry. Wow so yeah. how many you You've started, I saw, I saw the pigs, mm -hmm. bacon, mm -hmm. um, I've seen the pigs and the rabbits and I see that you're doing a lot of fowl and poultry. Yeah. What are you planning on doing with that part of it? Um, my number one goal now is to get ducks and ducks. geese. geese. And those are the first Why? priority. You know, we don't have the duck industry in Ghana. Uh -huh. But from research, I find out that the duck eggs are more protein than the chicken eggs. Yeah. And the ducks lay longer than the chicken. And from the research I had, the chicken lays between one year to one and a half years. Mm. The duck lays between three to four years. Oh wow, that's a lot longer. Yes. <laughs> so though they are expensive to start, the, infra the, 
the cost to study the duck, uh, duck uh, family is higher than the chicken. Right. Because one one chick, one chicken, one day old chick, um, in Ghana is between um, six to nine cities, depending on where you are bringing it from. Okay. And the duck, one duckling, is about fifty cities. Oh wow! <laughs> that's that's a big difference. That's the big difference. And so here, in, when it comes to the duck, it's only people who understand the mechanics of production in right. the industry who would like to venture into that because the and cost there is higher that's, oh, and that's all but you have a longer run with the animals too so you have to be thinking and they are, not just now but down they the road are hardier than the chicken oh they don't drink too much medicine like chicken interesting because yeah. there have been a lot of um, people who've talked about coming and doing chicken farming mm -hmm. here but you're mm -hmm. saying that duck might be someplace to consider exactly i love that are you now, I know because I talked to you before this, that mm -hmm. you are trying to import a very specific kind of duck yes. in from the West yes. um, and looking to really start this kind of agro business here. I'm going to put this out there for anyone who's watching. If mm -hmm. you are a duck expert, um, yeah. can you give this guy a call? <laughs> yes, that is it. That is it. <laughs> because it is a little bit different than doing chickens yes, and yes. you do need to approach it a little differently. Exactly. And, and one advantage about them is that they do very well in free range uh, as well than the chicken. Right, and that's... Yes, they are hardier. That's conducive to this environment. Exactly. And for those who um, are moving away from, uh, you know, a synthesized, you know, meat mm -hmm. to natural meat, the duck, you know, do that well in a free range environment. So that's easier to keep. In the free range environment, right? So there, the and there's there, there's less um, pesticide. You're not pesticide, but um, by antibiotics Chemicals, and things like yes, that. Antibiotics, that go into. you know, right. not too much of antibiotics. That's good. Uh, this this ones here, I've never remember giving them antibiotics. But this ones every week they must drink something. Ah, so the chickens <laughs> are much more prone to yeah, needing. very 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 prone. Not much, <laughs> very, very prone. but the the ducks the and the geese. No. If you talk to people who in the West who does, they will tell you that the ducks don't drink, drink that much medicine. Ah, that you know, and that's really interesting to mm -hmm. think too. Well, I mean, do you think there's a market here in Ghana for the ducks? Um, this this is one thing I always tell people: you cannot sell what you are not producing. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh -huh. So sometimes when when we started the rabbit, you see these big trees here. Yes. It is because of the rabbit in 2204 that we planted these two trees here because those days we were doing it outside, mm. all over here, right down, were full of rabbits. <laughs> and when people can say, ah, true, those days rabbits people don't know much about rabbits. When you ask them, so, oh, they, is it recently you eat the rabbit? It was recently we introduced him to rabbit. He doesn't even eat rabbit meat, meat before. When the guy say, ah, where are you going to sell this? I say, ah, if you are not producing, you can sell. Every, so can you sell them? You can sell everything on this earth if you produce and know how to sell yourself. Yeah, if you pa If you package <laughs> it, excuse me to say this is, we are in front of the camera. But I see people even drinking their own urine. Because somebody told them that tell it, has. Them it, it, it has a health, <laughs> health, health advantage. And they do. I think I'd rather have the duck. <laughs> <laughs> so in, the, in this world, anything you produce, you should be able to sell. Yes, I, I mean, I agree with you. And I, I think there is a very good argument for the less of a dependence on the chemicals that go into the animal, the, uh, the fact that it has more protein, yes. and the fact that from an investment point of view, mm -hmm. you are going to see a better return on exactly. your investment. Exactly. Well, I, I hope that somebody out there watching does have some experience with duck mm -hmm. and can give you a call. Yes, we will appreciate it. Yes, but I think much. there's also an opportunity here to collaborate. Are you looking for someone who can bring in some investment as well? Uh, truly, that's why I brought Tony and Ayu into my farm. <laughs> that's why we're here. <laughs> what is it? Well, what is it that you need to be more successful or to take it to the next level? Uh, it will depend on the investor. Normally, the person who is giving out the money mm -hmm. also have a say. Yes. Uh, and yes. so it's a win-win, a win-win situation. Right. So the person who is interested in agriculture and possibly in animal husbandry and he has some cash that he wants to invest. Mm. You sit down with him. What are your expectations? Right. And these are my expectations. You know, in the past, I've written a lot of um, mm -hmm. business plans. 
and the runners and sit down telling my children that I'm not very much interested in writing one. I want somebody <laughs> who had the money want to invest. We sit down with him. What are your expectations? What are your expectations? These are my plan. This is what I wanted to do. Are you interested? Mm. Yes. What do you expect out of it? We sit down and right. we come and to an agreement. The American call it a win-win situation. Yes. And if we have a win-win situation, we work together. Well, and I can already tell from the expansion that you're showing me mm -hmm. that you have a good mind for farming. I, I do. <laughs> you do. You I, definitely I do. do. So I have passion to, to expand. Well, and the, and the things that you're saying are so sound. I mean, they they not only come from the experience that you've had farming, yes. but I think they also kind of come from this knowledge that you've built from the years that you've worked in corporate America and in engineering. Exactly. Yeah. I learned a lot from Kaiser. <laughs> you, you, you know, I learned a lot from Kaiser. Yes. I, I work in the maintenance department, and uh, that has really give me a lot of insight into the corporate corporate industry. Yeah, I can see you applying that here, just yeah. in how you've laid things out mm -hmm. and how you've made this um, pathway to development yes. here and not just thought of things mm -hmm. in a very short term, that you really are thinking long term. So, yes. well, I'm hoping that we can find someone who's interested in investing. If we have someone out there who is looking to partner up and wants to come and visit your farm, can they do that as well? My, my doors are always open. Pastor Paul says his doors are always open, <laughs> and I'm thinking that you're going to want to come because yes. I really enjoyed our visit here today. Yeah, sure. I, we're going to be back. Yes. Really, I'm, I'm very passionate getting people who also want to go into agriculture. Yes. And then maybe we can develop together. I love that. So I'm, I'm hoping that someone will reach out. We're going to put Pastor Paul's contact information mm -hmm. into um, show notes mm -hmm. so that someone can reach out if they decide to. Yeah. Well, it has been so great to yeah. get to sit with you. Thank you so much for inviting us to the farm. Yes. Um, I hear that you have a, a chicken waiting to come home with me. Is that is that right? Yes, they are, they are working on it. <laughs> so you guys, uh, I'm going to have chicken dinner tonight, yeah. fresh from the farm. Yeah. I'm so excited. And some ducks as well. And some ducks too. Okay, that, mm. that'll be tomorrow. Another time, I don't want to um, wet your appetite for another time you get the rabbit and, the, and then the Christmas time you get the pork. Christmas? I'm ready. <laughs> Christmas. Not joking about somebody coming here and start processing for bacon. I want some good name bacon. Mm -hmm. Please feel free to reach out. Mm -hmm. um, Pastor Paul is more than open to not only getting some information, but also growing a conglomerate of people who want to look for investment as a way to bring up the Ghanaian industry as well as bring up the Ghanaian people. So I'm hoping that that will. I'm very grateful that you are, made, you are able to make it, spend your time and uh, coming to my farm. That's true. We are looking forward to work together. It was our pleasure. A better life. I hope so. Thank you I very so. much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dude, that interview was so good. Very, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I like loved talking to him. Every five seconds I was like, hold on, hold on, let me write this down. <laughs> I gotta write this down. Oh, right. Yeah, just his thoughts on, on how he plans to proceed with this farm and, and his expansion ideas just really caught my attention because there are some things that I had no idea about. Uh, one of the things being uh, uh, the pork processing, most of it is is imported. I mean, um, I think all, almost all of it is imported. Yeah, there's very yeah. little, there's no pork processing per se here. So like, if you want bacon, you're getting bacon from somewhere else. It's not Ghana bacon, right, even though right. there are pigs. There are plenty. He has pigs on his farm yes. that, you know, he's he's planning to use for that for that exact reason. Too. Yeah, so like one of the big things that he talked about was food processing. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there were like 10 different ideas that you could do with food processing. Right, so we right. talked about processing of animals specifically, mm -hmm. right? But then the whole conversation that he had about processing mangoes. Yeah, yeah. And just, mangoes was just... I didn't know all those things you can do with mangoes. No, so. and, and the fact that because... <laughs> Because the infrastructure is not here specifically to right. do that kind of processing, that farmers here are really put at a disadvantage because there's just this small window of time where you have harvest and you can take it to market. And then the then right. you're kind of then you're done. You're done. Basically, yeah. So his point on on um, animal farming, you know, is not a seasonal thing. You you can 
have the animals year round and 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 uh take care of that advantage year round but uh getting into uh planting particular uh fruits and vegetables you know those things are seasonal so if you're looking to invest in farming and agriculture that's something you really should keep aware of that you're going to hit that payday one time a year and then you're kind of done and something he's looking at is expanding his pork and ducks and geese and all that stuff the animal uh, farming uh, aspect so that he can you know have that money rolling in all year yeah so the big idea that i thought was great for takeaway um, was talking about the processing piece so no matter what you're harvesting whether that be um, mangoes, tomatoes, any, um, any fruits or vegetables, mm -hmm. or if you are raising and rearing animals, mm -hmm. the infrastructure to process those things is not here. And when we had that conversation with him afterwards, he was really talking about if you were to establish a good processing center here for any of those things right, and make it known to the local farmers that you were processing things that, that crops would come to you yes you wouldn't necessarily have to go out and yeah once once they know what you're doing uh they're they're coming to you and yeah. they they understand the uh the need for that here so right so if you are out there right now looking for business opportunities food processing mm -hmm. there's a huge market here for food processing mango. and i loved what the pastor said about the holistic approach where you take a mango and you get it to harvest and if there's leftovers that you then process those into a dried juice fruits or, or juice or and you know the scraps for yes. you know, uh, pig uh, for feed, feed. Yeah. right so that there's um this whole use of of the agriculture and not um, yeah, single use right not wasting for consumption. things yeah so i love that the other thing he talked about with us way back in the beginning of the interview was food preservation mm -hmm. dude we were doing math about the mangoes Ooh. so going to to harvest going to sell mangoes during harvest season what was it like it was Those, one kilo for 2.2 or two, one kilo for one, one and a half CDs. one and a half cds yeah and then to hear he went out and bought <laughs> one one mango for like he bought four mangoes for twenty cities for twenty cities so, and, but that's but that's crazy. exactly right because we are we just went to market to get mangoes mm -hmm. it was four and, four cities for one mango and they were not they weren't they very, weren't they, like, they yeah. weren't the greatest they were kind of small so it was like eh, mm -hmm. I would have paid a little more for a good mango and that was essentially what he's saying is yeah. that people want to eat the mangoes. But the season is so small that if someone could do preservation, they would almost corner the market. So, that there's yeah, so there's investment opportunities for I think what he called them reefer boxes. Or yeah, he called them black boxes. Black but, boxes. Um, yeah. I I, I kind of looked that up afterwards, and it, it was just a refrigeration type box. Right. And like I said in the interview, this is something that we see a lot in South America in terms of and banana banana preservation. preservation. Yeah. But that market is in so many places, you know, there's always a need throughout the West for in season, you know, fruit yeah, off fruit season, off season. <laughs> fruits yeah, and vegetables off go. season. Um, major opportunities there. Oh. Investors, expand your mindset on where you're, where you can invest uh, because he Absolutely. threw out so many ideas that it was hard to <laughs> focus on just one at a time. You, you, you're hearing one thing after the, uh, yes. another. And, uh, it can be overwhelming, but do do look into other uh, avenues for investments, and there's yes, plenty absolutely. of uh, ground level opportunities to get in on, and you'll be so so far ahead of the absolutely. game. Absolutely, even when we were talking, you could really only tell us of one or two major player, uh, or, or not even major player, but like the corner of the market people mm -hmm. on on harvesting and farming of mangoes uh -huh. and. There are so many more. I mean, like the opportunities are just so endless. And, I, you know, as we were having further conversations with him, the other part that I really liked about how he thinks about this process is you start with one refri refrigeration unit. Mm -hmm. You start with one unit. The people start to realize that you will accept all, uh, of, their all, of, their, all of their mangoes and all of their harvest. And also down the road that you have mangoes off season and the market will develop around you. And as it develops, you continue to add more units. So to have this, 
you know, I think a lot of people think about investment and they're like, okay, we're just going to dump a bunch of money in it and, uh, and, and like, yeah, yeah. he's so good about thinking about this logical progression mm -hmm. so that you're making a sound investment right. when you're doing and, things. And, and the thing is, what I really love about him is the way he set his life up is he's retiring from, from the church to go full in on the farming. And he's like, you know, I, uh, my calling is now to a different different aspect of life and, and I'm moving towards that now and I'm like wow which is cool I don't know any other people who take a moment in the middle of their life to change things up yeah he's totally switching it up but he's <laughs> he's he's looking down the road and, and taking advantage of opportunities that he sees that you know are again ground level that right. no one else is thinking about and he's and he's had the you know because of the way that he's done this he has afforded himself the, the room to make mistakes when he was working in a very small, a small scale. scale right. right so now he's he's really like he's refined what he's doing and he has a pretty good understanding um, of the market and how to bring things to market and timing of crops that he's now ready to go full force yeah, and, he, and, and his research he's, he's oh, been yeah. traveling the globe on his research so I tell you I, I feel really comfortable um, just wanting to invest with him. Yes, absolutely. So food processing, a great idea for investment here. Food preservation, mm -hmm. a great idea for investment here. And we have a bunch of people in our Facebook group who are looking into farming and looking into um, what options they have in terms of purchasing land and, and starting a sustainable farm. And I, I really got to tell you, if you have the opportunity to come and visit in Ghana, mm -hmm. Pastor Paul has said, that he kind of will welcome people yeah. who want to come and check out the farm and see how things are going, mm -hmm. or just to chat and get ideas. Um, and he's also in search of people who have um, experience with geese. Yes. yes. Um, and ducks, or just ducks. Ducks, ducks in particular, yeah. So if you are a person out there who has experience with ducks and yeah. raising ducks, um, he sees a um, opportunity here and he yes. wants to expand um, that, expand that mm -hmm. and is looking for someone who can give insight. Although I don't even know what insight you could give because he was telling yeah, he, me stuff and I was like, so much about, but I think it was more of, of large just the, scale. Yeah. Yeah. Like that and, and processing. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, so food processing, food preservation, a big conversation about the timing of your harvest. Um, he kind of went through the fact that People will come thinking they're going to start a mango farm, and it takes three to five years for you to get your first yeah yeah your first harvest. So you do have to have a progressive thought about how you're harvesting mm -hmm. and what what part of your farm is going to be dedicated to what crop. However, if you go into the animal farming, well, that's year round Absolutely. all the time. Well, and he had some really good ideas too. Like he was doing poultry, pig, rabbit, and he was talking about. Um, just and, the, how to maintain those those yeah. five different types of animals that he has on the farm, mm -hmm. and the cost and the the risk of all, of each kind. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, going into animals all all year round if you decide yeah. you want to do that. Um, and then I I have to go back and talk a little bit about investment opportunities with Pastor Paul specifically. Um, mm -hmm. He is looking for people who want to come in and invest in the farm either as a front end lump sub or through dividends or mm -hmm. through um, small investment conglomerate. Yes. So he is looking for people who are interested in really getting it on the ground floor at developing a way to improve the infrastructure of agriculture and farming in Ghana. His plan is going forward with or without right, us right. or y'all, yeah. which I actually find to be very reassuring that yeah. someone is not out hunting for investment because they can't do to anything start. about it. They're right. going to start and, and the scale they start on depends on what they have at the time. So he's, he's moving forward and yes. uh, it would be great if anyone out there wants to move forward with him. He's a great partner to work with. Absolutely. And his vision for developing the, um, the land as a part of the farm and then the animals as another section of the farm and then improving the processing options on the farm specifically. Yeah. I, I, it's uh, right now he's, he's operating on 10 acres with the mangoes and his vision was to get out of the mangoes. 
No, he's got more than 10 now. Or is it more than 10? Yeah, it's more than 10. He wants to go down to 10 oh, acres for that. Go down to 10 for the mangoes mm -hmm. and the, the rest of it to, to have for the animals. So it's, uh, as far as scale, he's really looking large scale. Yeah, which is really exciting. So a couple different things. We're going to put Pastor Paul's information in show notes. Mm -hmm. I have to let you know right now, he is, is very welcoming as a pastor. Yes, uh, very willing to have a conversation. Um, but if you are interested in either investing in him specifically, or I guess even getting more information about um, investing in agriculture here, mm -hmm. he definitely is a great reference point and source of information and also source of connection. So mm -hmm. he's just a wealth of knowledge. So I'm going to put his information in show notes. Um, I know Tony is all excited because he's like, I'm going to buy a refrigeration unit. <laughs> But, you know, if you are in a group like our Facebook group and you can find two or three or four other people who all want to invest in this so that you can start to generate residual income to support your life while you're here in Ghana, I think it's a great five-year plan to put in place if right, you're thinking right. about moving and you're trying to figure out how your income is going to work. And that way, you know, you aren't all by yourself. You're, you're actually, you know, partnering up with people and that, that drops to your investment. Um, uh, your initial capital that you're going to have to put down. So um, partnering up is always great. Um, if yeah. you just got a whole bunch of money and you want to go at it yourself, hey, still give him a call. He'll still, work with you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we're going to ask a quick qu question here as we get ready to go, uh, but it requires a story. So he has <laughs> poultry on the farm, geese, ducks, and mm -hmm. chicken. And he was like, would you like one? And of course I was like, yeah, yeah fresh poultry, fresh, why uh, not? Fresh duck and chicken, I'll take it. And he was like, well, will you dress it yourself or would you like us to dress it? And I, I was like, like oh. in like a tie or uh, pants? I don't get it. And I said that to him and he literally looked at me and was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> like, I've been to the farm, but, you know, I never worked on the farm. So, no, you will have to dress it yourself, sir. I told him he had to come ask you because I really was like, I have no idea what he's asking yeah. me about. So, anyway, the they were able to dress the chicken for us. Chicken and duck. Chicken and a duck. And I, I'm curious, how many of you guys out there have eaten duck before? I, like answer that question down in the comments. Have you eaten duck? And the other question that I'm so curious about is how many of you guys knew what it meant to dress a chicken or dress or a duck? Or have you ever dressed a chicken or, or a duck? Have you ever before? dressed one by yourself? I felt bad that I had no idea what the guy was talking about. Yeah, I knew what he was talking about, but I was like, no, I, I don't do that. I did not. I literally was like, pants and a bow tie. Is that like, what does that mean? In a she little really said wrap? That. I really did. He really looked at me like, oh, that's crazy. Right. A little bit of like crazy and a little bit of like, aww. She's so special. Oh, Tony. Aww. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's take a second to to uh, remind you guys, if you have not subscribed already, to go ahead and subscribe and let you know that next like week bill. we will be doing a live Q&A video for our Friday video. So if you missed our last Q&A in... Um, what month is it? In October. In October yeah. Here's a chance for you to, rest, to grab our November Q&A. We'll be doing that the last Friday of the month. So we have a regular way to connect with you guys. So be sure if you have not, if you have questions that you want us to answer, um, drop them in comments uh, and let us know so that we can go ahead and put that in our um, Q&A for next week. For next week. And I think that's it, right? Mm. The chicken was really good. Chicken, I don't know about chicken. the duck yet, but the yeah. chicken was good. Yeah. That chicken was good. Not like fresh chicken. Oh my God. Off the okay. farm. Sorry, I got to side track a yeah. little bit by the chicken. <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Charlie out. For real, that was good chicken. That was. I, I, it makes me kind of want chicken right I want now. The, I can't wait to have the duck. I don't know if I'm ready to do the duck. Oh, the duck it's just sweet chicken. It's sweet chicken. Yeah. That doesn't sound right to me, sweet chicken. It's just, yeah, it's just a richer. Is it like denser or is, is the texture different? About the same. Okay, I'll have to try it. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a little scared. Tur you never had turducken? I've heard of a turducken. Yeah. Oh, when you told him about a turducken, oh, his face was like... like, what the heck is wrong with these <laughs> Yeah, do you guys raise turduckens? <laughs> like, no, uh, no, no fool, we just eat yeah. stuff. <laughs> How do you do that? If you want to invest in the turducken market here in Ghana, there you go. So. <laughs> <laughs>